Well, hello, and today we will talk about everyone's nemesis, sugar. I saw many, many patients in my clinic that were obese, and because of that, had many other medical issues. In our society today, there is more fast food and junk food than ever before. Fast food's cheap, and for some people, very filling on a small budget. But there are ramifications to this. According to the World Health Organization, the average per capita sugar consumption was approximately 37.5 pounds annually in 1961. But by 2017, this figure had soared to 68.7 pounds per person, nearly doubling within a span of just over half a century. For some kids, that brings a new meaning to the statement of, I could eat my weight in sugar. In the United States, a major contributor to this local trend, the average American consumes about 17 teaspoons of added sugar daily, far surpassing the recommended daily set by the experts. This alarming level of sugar consumption can be attributed to the widespread availability of sugary products and beverages on the market. The USDA recommends no more than 10% of your daily intake of calories to be an added sugar. In a 2,000 calorie diet, this would equate to about 12 teaspoons. As you can see, we're way above that on average as a nation. Let's talk about obesity. I had a woman patient at my clinic not long before I retired that just got up to leave when I told her that she needed to lose some weight because it was affecting her health. She told me that she didn't have to sit here and listen to this stuff from me. So as you can see, I can tell you that there are many excuses why we don't stop eating. After all, it's comforting. It satisfies our taste. It's a pleasure. It can be a calming mechanism for some. But let's look at what eating's done and all of this is doing to, our med, uh, to us medically. Obesity is a complex condition characterized by the accumulation of excess body fat. High sugar intake contributes to obesity through several mechanisms. One is empty calories. Sugar is calorie dense but lacks essential nutrients. Consuming sugary foods and drinks can easily lead to an excessive calorie intake without providing the body with the necessary vitamins, minerals, and proteins it needs. Excessive sugar intake can lead to insulin resistance. Insulin is a hormone that helps regulate blood sugar levels by facilitating the uptake of glucose or sugar into our cells for energy. When the body becomes resistant to insulin, cells don't respond properly to its signals, leading to an elevated blood sugar level. To compensate for that, the body produces more insulin, which can promote fat storage, particularly around the abdomen. Sugary foods and drinks can stimulate appetite without providing a feeling of fullness. This can lead to overeating and weight gain. To fix this, reduce sugar intake, especially from sugary snacks or desserts and sugary beverages. Focus on a balanced diet that includes plenty of fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains. Engage in regular physical activity to help burn off calories and improve insulin sensitivity. Monitor and manage portion sizes to avoid overeating. Excessive sugar consumption is a significant risk factor to develop type 2 diabetes. Insulin resistance, another form, in type 2 diabetes, the body's cells become resistant to insulin making it difficult for glucose to enter the cells. This results in elevated blood sugar levels. Beta cell dysfunction, another form. Over time, the insulin producing beta cells in the pancreas may become exhausted from working so hard over time to compensate for all of the insulin resistance. This can lead to reduced insulin production. The long-term effects of this can be a prolonged high blood sugar level that can damage blood vessels and nerves, leading to serious complications such as heart disease, kidney disease, vision problems, and nerve damage. We have discussed this kind of thing several times before. When things like this are happening, nothing hurts, 
so we don't know that we're harming our body until we start noticing things such as decreased eyesight or decreased circulation with also some high blood pressure, some leg cramps, secondary to damaged blood vessels. When all this starts happening and you start to notice it, then the damage is done and there's no fixing it. Now we have to manage what we have to work with. High sugar consumption is associated with an increased risk of heart disease through various mechanisms. High blood pressure. Excessive sugar intake can lead to high blood pressure or hypertension as it's called a major risk factor for heart disease. Inflammation. Sugar can trigger inflammation in the body, promoting the development of atherosclerosis or narrowing of the arteries and increase the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Triglycerides. High sugar consumption, especially fructose, can elevate triglyceride levels in the blood, another risk factor for heart disease. Remember when we previously discussed chronic inflammation in the body and the destruction it can cause? Well, bingo, this is what we're discussing, chronic inflammation. Metabolic syndrome is a cluster of conditions that often coexist and increase the risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. These conditions include obesity, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and abnormal lipid levels. Excessive sugar consumption plays a role in the development of metabolic syndrome by contributing to weight gain, insulin resistance, and elevated blood pressure. Notice how high blood pressure from weight gain, weight gain from excessive sugar consumption, insulin resistance from burning out the beta receptor cells from overabundance of sugar, and elevated blood pressure from damage to the vessels occurring from increased sugar consumption all come from too much sugar. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a condition characterized by the accumulation of fat in the liver, not related to alcohol consumption. Excessive fructose consumption, commonly found in table sugar or sucrose, and high fructose corn syrup can contribute to the development of the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. When the liver metabolizes fructose, it can convert it into fat, leading to fat buildup in the liver. High sugar consumption has been associated with mood swings, increased anxiety, and depression. The rapid spikes and crash in blood sugar levels that occur after consuming sugary foods and drinks can influence mental well-being. The old picture of a person sitting down with a container of ice cream to eat away their problems comes to mind here. These fluctuations can lead to irritability, fatigue, and difficulty concentrating. In every instance mentioned above, the answer or fix to this is pretty much the same. Cut back on the sugar intake. Eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Get plenty of exercise. Check your blood pressure regularly. Get regular checkup visits with your provider to elevate your blood glucose level, as well as a hemoglobin A1C test for those that have high blood sugar. It's a more accurate test of how your sugar is doing over time versus how your sugar level is right now. Get frequent eye exams. No, it's not good enough to say, I see fine, my eyes must be okay. One more time for you guys, as I see every, every article, I repeat the same things over again. Guys are notorious for rubbing dirt on it or drinking more beer until the pain goes away, or sit and resting until the chest pain subsides. Go see your provider for a checkup, and don't sit at home asking all your friends or Uncle Buck what they think you ought to do.